guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Cotty, and today is Talk About It Thursday. I hope your weekend was good, and as well as you having a good week so far. Um, before we get started, we're just going to do a quick check-in. After that, we're going to dive in into the topic of today. Um, so I've been trying to catch up on sleep on the side, but I have a lot to do. So that's my week. Um, I have a lot that's going on and I'm just trying to push through and use as much energy as I can. So girls, when one of you is ready, you can go ahead and tell us a little bit about your week so far. My week has been okay. Um, pretty much the same old work from home. Been trying to press um, justice to get ready for school, so that's been a challenge. Trying to get this scheduled together. Cool. But other than that, it's been good. All right, Kristen, how was your week so far or weekend? Yeah, my week was pretty good. You know, just trying to get back on a regimen. So, I've been doing a lot of more, a lot more um, outdoor exercise. You know, well, like, since March, it's been the same day, just repeated. Yes. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Every day. Even though now we can at least um, step outside, it's still the same routine. Like, ugh. Yep. Go outside, put on a mask, stand in line. Mm -hmm. like, I guess quickly for today, we're going to have a quick conversation about um, life in quarantine. Yeah, I haven't tried um, dining out yet because whenever I'm passing around, I see people are still not social distancing. Like, right. if it's too crowded. A lot of places. Yeah, if it's too crowded, I don't even want to attempt it. And when I've caught myself not having a mask when I leave to go somewhere, I just stay in the car <laughs> or drive my butt right back to the house because it's just like, um, just in case you want to have your mask. So I, I try to have them in the car, in my purse, but whenever I just want to, when I'm being, you know, on the passenger side and I forget I just stay in the car because I think here a lot of people in my state are not really social distancing at all like walking around with no mask yeah. I guess they feel like uh, uh, coronavirus is gone a lot of people still don't wear masks you be in the store with people and they have the mask underneath their nose and You can still get it and pass it through your nose. Mm-hmm. I saw people going inside the stores with no mask. And I'm just like, you might even try it. <laughs> right. And it, it is crazy because the signs, the people have up. Like, if you don't have a mask, you don't get service. But that's yeah. not true. We have that here, too. They go in and they do their business without no mask. I think only the people that are scared or, you know, want to follow the rules actually do it because I would assume with that sign that they wouldn't let me go in so that's why I try my best to always have a mask because I would be upset if I drove all the way somewhere and I don't have a mask and they're like oh you can't come in you know what I mean like so I try to always have a mask but that's one thing um think for me Life in quarantine, um, I don't want to exaggerate. I would say a lot more time indoors than I would want to to spend indoors. Like, I would prefer, especially during the summer, to be traveling, 
even if it's state to state, to just be traveling, um, to exercise more outside, especially with the types of exercise I do, I can't even play basketball comfortably. <laughs> when the yeah, courts, who's gonna do that with a mask? you know, and you then know, when the courts are now, when the courts are now open and there are people around with no mask, I don't ever feel comfortable. So certain right. times at the park, I have to leave because I'm just like, uh, there's nobody, there's too many people here. Um, and then my next sport to play tennis, I need a partner, you know, I can't even, I don't even feel comfortable just going to a tennis court playing with anyone because you never know. Because you in contact with that whole. Yeah. So it's just like a lot of things that I tend to do during the summer, during the regular days, quarantine just like psh, took it away. And it's like, oh, you got to spend time with yourself. I love myself, but I want to create memories, you know? Um, yeah, right. I had enough of my self time. Yeah. The first couple of weeks, I was like, I was like, I was bet. It. I was like, bet. I'm at home. I can sleep. I can, you know, create a routine. I could do this and do that. Yes, I created the routine. Yes, I slept, but the time to follow up with the routine it was like damn it's like every day i gotta wake up and work out every day <laughs> like and then the meals become the same for a while when the stores weren't open it was like i felt like i was eating the same stuff over and over um and that's not something that i really like doing i, I like a variety although I'm vegan. I like a variety of different vegan food. But for me, quarantine life has been like... A lot of people have been using the word anxious or like curious or whatever it is. Quarantine life has been a roller coaster for me. You know. It's been a roller coaster. Because who likes to stay inside of their house 24-7? Majority of... Uh, and even if you're out, you're out for probably like seven hours max. Right. But so, quarantine life feels like when I first had Jay. Mm. Because, you know, that was the time where you can't go nowhere because you're stuck in a house with a newborn. So now I feel like that's happening to me all over again. <laughs> mm. Because, of course, but now only this time add in homeschool and add in work from home. Right. So it's just like, you know, I love spending time with my kid at home, but I want to go outside and I want to do stuff that, you know, I want to go to the pool, but then I'm like, uh-uh, these people, mm -mm, I'm okay. Right. They they, they open the pool, like, the public pool, and I was just like, mm -hmm. And, like, uh, you know, I love swimming, so if I can find a pool that I feel comfortable in, I mm -hmm. want to jump in there, and I've been deprived of that. I'm just, you know, people do a lot of things, can do a lot yeah. of things. I just, I don't want to take that chance. Mm -hmm. I don't know if um, taking the temperatures of the people before they get in the pool. Like, I don't, I don't know what they're doing. Well, that's better I than one know. day opened up and the know, beach. you people were peeing in the damn pools before. <laughs> so now you gotta worry about the peach and the coronavirus. Yep. My oh. And the nasty people that be spitting out in the pool. Mm -mm. Yeah, no, nobody got time for all of that. Uh, yeah, so I'm just like ready for it to be over only with solutions. And another right. part of you know, another part of me is just like sometimes conspiracy theorist part of me is like, this ish even like, did it even happen? <laughs> you know? Like, is it something that's happening and why? And then another part of me is like, it must have because there are people that are dying from this. You know what I mean? Like, right. if it's true or if it's not true, I don't want to take that risk. Like, I don't want to take that risk. 
at first I feel like I, I had the conspiracy theorist uh, standpoint. I was like, yeah, this is not real. But then it hit home because my grandma got it. Mm. And, like, she was hospitalized for a week or so with it. So that's when it hit home. And then I started to get an extra, like, um, worry and taking precautions and stuff. Mm. I've been hearing from a lot of my other friends saying, I think I got it. I think I had it before. You know? Yeah, and too. I feel like I had it. So it's just like, it's just, um, what's this thing? It's like, uh, it's not guaranteed for everyone, but some people do have their immune system to to cope with it, you know what I mean? And some people don't. And I do want to give my condolences to those that actually lost someone due to coronavirus. Um, so I, I'm sincerely sorry that if you had lost someone. So I think some people do have, did have it. But then they were able to actually take that time and self quarantine. You know. The thing is, I feel like uh, when did this start? In uh, March, mm -hmm. six months? But I feel like back in January, Justice had this because he had a fever of like a hundred and three point five for two weeks straight. Nothing would break it. I was going back and forth to the to Jacoby for like the whole two weeks, and they was like, I was like, you need to test him for the flu, cause like something is going on. I was like, you need to take blood, you need to do this. Like he's fighting an infection. Something is happening, cause you don't just have a fever for two weeks, right? For no reason. Like he fever, he was vomiting, he was sleeping all the time. Like, it was really bad. And me, like, I'm that mom. I don't send my kids to school when they sick. But you have those moms that, that still send their kids because they got to go to work. So they give them a little bit of motion and send them on that bus, you know? Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I feel like he had it back then. Because they kept telling me, oh, it's a viral infection. Um, he'll pass it. But no, no viral infection lasts for two weeks. Mm -hmm. It's crazy because it's like when the two weeks was done, that fever broke, and he, it was like it never happened to him. Mm. And then in March, uh, like two weeks after, it started getting big, and the news that coronavirus uh, existed, I feel like me and Emmanuel had it, cause, but um, I went to I. They was like, oh, how you got here? And I was like, I drove here, but I still feel like shit. Mm. And they was like, oh, you're fine. Um, uh, we can't test you if you're not, like, almost dying. Pretty much what they're saying. <laughs> but I went there because I was literally, I'm coughing, and nothing is coming out but blood. Mm. Nothing was coming out but blood. I was coughing and coughing and coughing. Mm. Nothing was coming out of like when you feel like you spit in a phlegm it wasn't phlegm it was straight blood mm. had a fever it, the fever I kept taking a Tylenol every four hours so the fever for me did break and like I was living over my soul with like the salt and the orange peel oil over mm -hmm. the stove and just inhaling that mm -hmm. me. so I feel like that is kind of what like once I started doing that I started feeling mm -hmm. better that's the crazy part um, that you felt like they were only going to take it seriously if you were close to death. And I think that's what happened to the majority of the people that ended up passing away. Or they weren't given yeah. the service once it happened, you know? And throughout right. this quarantining, it's really sad when I see news or let's say I see um, things on Instagram of nurses or doctors that are giving us warnings, you know, and they're in, 
you know, they're on the ground working, doing the things that they need to do in the hospital. But they're also telling us the reality of things that are happening in the hospital. And I think that also scared certain people that might have had it to not go to the hospitals. Because they were either not going to be taken care of or it's just going to get worse than that environment. You know, so... I don't know. I mean, I, I am it was grateful. A lot of factors that went into it. Yeah, yeah. I am in grateful though for the essential workers because they mm-hmm. risk their life every day. But you know, throughout this whole thing, mm-hmm. you know. But mm-hmm. for us, the, I mean, I think that's what's been happening mainly for me is the mm-hmm. fact that throughout the quarantine, I still had to work. Um. But summer school was different because it was now I, still at home. <laughs> I was in charge of extracurricular activities, like doing after school program. And I had to kind of put in that creative hat and do like, um, we we're doing basketball activities, but with socks and a <laughs> trash can. <laughs> and I'm like, this is something you used to do at home when you were bored, you know, either a paper ball or whatever, you know? <laughs> Things like that, but I had to, during quarantine, change my perspective and be a little bit more creative. How has quarantine been for you, um, Kristen? I mean, it's been good. Oh, slightly difficult. Um, again, uh, um, circling back to what Nikita said, like, I, I felt like I was gotten sick, too. Um, I wasn't, I was tested for antibodies, but... I don't think I had it. I guess it, it might have been. I, I, I didn't catch my results. But, um, but yeah, after that, that happened around like my birthday, so about February. Mm-hmm. But I know that this is a lingering from way before then. Um, mm-hmm. But other than that, it's just been like, you know, the change of routine, work has been slow, slowed down like dramatically. Um, you know, I'm home a lot more. And I, I, I love my dear parents, but, you know, I need some space. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with the work slowing down, <laughs> with the work slowing down and stuff like that, mm-hmm. it, it slowed down my progress so that I can, you know, have my own space mm-hmm. for myself. But um, I, I, I've i seen a light in this situation mm-hmm. just because I've been spending time with my um, my close friends that are nearby. So that's that's about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, it's just been, you know, just this one tragedy after the next. You know, you can't watch the news too much because it'll depress you. Um, and I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to read the book, you know, certain habits so that in case that this goes on longer than intended, you know, I'm making productive moves. But other than that, like, it's just, things are not going to ever be the same, but we got to make it as normal as we can for ourselves because we're so used to behaving the way we used to. Mm -hmm. And people have to understand that we are social beings. So it's just that we have to adjust and hopefully, you know, this, um, propels us into a way of making sure that we check our hygiene, we're checking our well-being, and, you know, keeping our common spaces both in the home and outside, like in the streets or, you know, traveling, public transportation, all that stuff that people are going to, um, you know, try to keep it as sanitary as possible. 